Alrighty then. Hey guys, so what's up? It's me, Priscilla. So for today's tutorial, if a lot of you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I did, I posted a picture the other day of, of course, the flash symbol, because I'm currently obsessed with the flash. He's perfect. And I posted this picture of the flash symbol with a bunch of circles, and I said that this is a watercolor exercise that I have all my students, because I teach art outside of YouTube for a job. So I am an art teacher, so this is the first project that I present to my students when it comes to watercolor like an introduction into watercolor I would always say do this exercise first and then let's start jumping into scenery pieces or animal pieces anyways they always seem to enjoy it but it's really simple but it teaches you to control the watercolor so what this exercise consists of is a bunch of circles so you guys have probably seen this before I'm gonna take my CD and I just totally moved it and I'm gonna trace around my CD a couple of times. Now, don't do this to where you're starting to kill yourself and go absolutely insane. Do as many circles as you can handle. So I don't want my pencil marks to show just because it is going to be uh, it is going to be really pretty if you don't have these pencil marks. But if you need to see the pencil marks, then go ahead and do it. As you can see, I've got a ton of my CD markings everywhere. I've got about one, two, three, four. So I'm comfortable with four circles, and you see how they're overlapping each other. So this is my favorite favorite watercolor paper I don't like really working with any other kind of watercolor paper I've tried before but I always come back to this particular kind of paper and I hope it never goes out of, never goes out of business because I love it way too much anyways so the pa watercolor paper is different I do suggest that you get some type of watercolor paper because the thing about this is when you're doing this watercolor exercise this exercise teaches you how the watercolor will not go anywhere unless you put water down. Let's start with this one right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and start with pink. So this teaches you no matter where I put my watercolor, wherever I put my water, the watercolor should not run over into any other part of the paper. So if you're like really scared that, oh no, it's gonna bleed into this side of the circle, or oh no, it's gonna bleed into this side of the circle, it will not, as long as, the water, as there's no water around it. Now, if you were to go ahead and start like immediately jump from this circle and then jump into this circle, this bit right here, then you would have a problem of probably the water bleeding into each other. So what I've created here is a basic wash. So this is going to teach you as well how to start stacking layers on top of layers when it comes to watercolor, because layers are going to be your best friend. You can overdo layers, but you want to get to the point that it's a tasteful amount of layers. So this is, con this is showing you how to control the water. If I don't have water right next to it here or right here, then my Pink will not bleed into any other colors. So I'm gonna jump in with purple and I'm gonna start over here. And this is going to teach you how to multitask when it comes to watercolor. It is a lot of hurry up and wait. You can use a hair dryer, but I don't really like using hair dryers because uh, just want, giving it time and having a little bit of patience and letting the watercolor set on its own is so much more beneficial and it just looks so much cooler when you actually let it go ahead and sit by itself. This part's drying and this part dro is drying so that gives me like a good reason to start looking around thinking where else can I go while I'm waiting for this to dry. Well this isn't really touching here so I can go ahead and paint this entire section of circle. Once again, keep in mind that I'm making just the first layer of my circles, just nice washes, just a lot of water and a little bit of watercolor. So I'm waiting for this to dry, this to dry, and this to dry, so that means I could probably go ahead and jump up to this part because it's not really touching the top right here. It does touch, but I'm not going to get close enough to where the water is emerged. So I just want to go ahead and leave a little bit of space and then I can come back later on in my second layer and go ahead and fill it in there. So now that this one is nearly dry, 
I'm gonna go ahead, and oh, it's a little dry, <laughs> but at least the outside is dry. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a color over here. So this area right here is nice and these two areas are pretty dry so I'm going to go ahead and jump into here. This spot is dry so I'll go ahead and apply a color here and I'll apply one right here. This spot up here is dry so I'm going to go ahead and apply a little watercolor up here. So now that this one and this one are dry I'm going to go ahead and give that one a color. Last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to this one and give this one a color. Here we go, see? Oh, it's bleeding, oh no! Don't freak out because all you have to do is just blot it and there it is. No more running into each other. Now that we've finished every single one's first layer, that's when you go around and you start working with the second layers. And this is more of like your preference, what where you want the shadows and the lights to be. I would typically be like, I would make more shadows over here and start over here with my second layer. Now this is totally up to you as well. Just make sure you follow the same pattern where you let everything, you're just jumping around and you let everything dry. So this is just a great way for you guys to go ahead and experiment with watercolor. This is the project that I always present just to show kids like you may like watercolor, you may not. So far I've had two students that decided that they like watercolor after doing this project. It's fun, it's simple, and it gives you a really pretty abstract piece of art to work with and it gives you just the basics of watercolor, just learning how to control your watercolor and learning to put layers on and just having patience and letting your watercolor dry. So it is watching paint dry, but it's really cool and it's a fun way to just kickstart your watercolor adventures and career. But yes, I hope this was helpful and I hope hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I really hope you guys will give it a try and maybe it'll make you guys want to go out and buy a whole pad of watercolor paper with watercolor paints. It's a lot of fun and yes, I hope you all have a most wonderful day and I will see you all later. Bye!